Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic is stem cell therapy for plantar fasciitis. Well, what exactly is plantar fasciitis? It's a very painful foot condition that refers to inflammation of the tissue that extends from the heel along the arch of the foot. And this is commonly something that develops in people who um, are middle age, uh, athletes, those who have a rapid weight gain, and runners. Well, the symptoms include pain localized along the heel and at the bottom area of the foot. It can become severe, especially when you first stand up in the morning and it's tight. Uh, the pain may subside quickly, but it can return after a prolonged standing or walking during the day. So traditional treatment options have included rest, ice, stretching, anti-inflammatories by mouth, maybe some pain creams, some inserts for the shoe, there's some night splints such as you see here, uh, possibly a cortisone injection, and what you see here, which is called ESWT, which is shockwave therapy. So the newest options include regenerative medicine, and this is with either PRP therapy, which is actually not a stem cell therapy, um, we'll get into that in a moment, and amniotic therapy, which can have live stem cells in it. And these treatments are designed to repair and regenerate the damaged and inflamed tissue. So an overview of PRP. PRP starts with a simple blood draw of 30 to 60 cc's, and the blood is spun rapidly in what's called the centrifuge for about 15 minutes. And what you end up with is three layers. The top layer is plasma, and that's not what you want, so that's discarded. The bottom layer is simply red blood cells, and that's discarded. And this is what you want. It's called the Buffy coat and it includes a lot of platelets. That's why it's called platelet-rich plasma. And then it may include white blood cells or not, depending on what type of kit is used. What you end up with is about three to five cc's. The growth factors that are in it, along with platelets, are very powerful for helping heal damaged tissue. Now, amniotic therapy includes fluid that comes from consenting mothers after a scheduled C-section. Baby's fine, there's no ethical issues. You know, normally it gets thrown away, but it has a lot of stem cells and growth factors and hyaluronic acid and cytokines. Um, basically, it's uh, taken in a sterile manner and processed at an FDA-regulated lab, and then it gets cryopreserved. And it can come as a fluid or as a membrane. Now, let's look at P PRP therapy results first. Uh, this study is uh, 2016, Effectiveness and Relevant Factors of PRP Treatment in Managing Plantar Fasciitis. Now, this group looked at 12 articles, a total of 455 patients. And out of all the articles, they noted a superiority of PRP treatment compared to steroid uh, with no complications in any of the studies. So study after study showed that PRP treatment was more effective. Here's another recent study looking at PRP versus corticosteroid. Uh, this was not a, a review, but just one comparative study. They looked at 60 patients, randomized steroid versus PRP. Both of them were equally effective at three and six months. However, the PRP was more durable, and it was statistically better at 12 months, and that's when they you know, stopped. So it might be that it kept going and going and going, but the steroid did not. Now, one more comparison of PRP and steroid in the treatment. This was 50 patients that were randomized. Um, PRP appears to be more effective than steroid in terms of pain and functional results all the way through six months. So at every time point that they checked, uh, PRP was better. All right, moving over to amniotic therapy. Uh, first, we look at, at a foot and ankle international, a prospective randomized blinded comparative study of injectable amniotic um, they looked at 45 patients, they randomized them and followed them for function, pain, and functional health and well-being, and they found that amniotic therapy was a viable treatment option and it helped statistically significant uh, with the results of all of these factors. Here's another one out of the British Journal of Sports Medicine, Injection Therapies for Plantar Fasciitis, a systematic review. They looked at 22 studies that comprised a total of over 1,200 patients, and they found Amniotic injections were significantly superior to corticosteroids in the short term. Most studies didn't go past two months, um, so that's what they found. They actually found, interesting enough, that Botox injections were superior for six months. In conclusion, amniotic therapy 
and PRP treatment for chronic plantar fasciitis has been shown to work better than the gold standard, which has been cortisone. As a result, it may truly help patients achieve relief and avoid the need for questionable surgery. And if you have someone who has chronic plantar fasciitis has been going on for a while, surgery is not the best option. It doesn't have the greatest outcomes. There are some risks involved. So it's much better to opt for one of these or both of these treatments to try and get long-term durable relief to avoid surgery. R3 truly wants to make a difference in patients' lives by helping them avoid surgery and remain as active as desired. Our affiliated nationwide centers of excellence offer first-rate regenerative treatments. So visit us online today at r3stemcell.com or simply give us a call at 844-GET-STEM. Thank you for watching.